Hi, welcome to Section 4, Poly Modeling. In the last section, we discussed a number of NURBS modeling techniques, which I've used to complete the railings in our scene. The next step will be to create architecture using poly modeling. This modeling style is very basic in principle, and you can teach yourself simply by exploring 3D Max. Aside from the huge variety of primitives we have available to us under this pull-down menu, we also have customized user interface at our beck and call. Under this um, toggle menu, you'll find editable poly, and under here, it's a really good idea to write down all of these hotkeys and experiment with using them. The accomplished Max user um, is one, in my opinion, who uses these so regularly that it's as if they're playing the piano. It's second nature and you don't need to think about it. If you're not familiar with all of these, it's a good idea to find um, a hotkey which is not assigned to anything and assign it to all of these in turn and try them out and just see what they do. It'll give you a better idea of how to navigate this menu. Now when you're creating your objects, um, you have the option of converting between several things. Editable poly is very good for modeling, and editable mesh is good for keeping your polys low. So a lot of times I will work in editable poly and then convert it to mesh when I'm done. Now the first hotkeys you really need to know are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. They toggle between the different sub-object um, levels. Alt-L is for loop. Alt-R is for ring. That'll select these polys. Bevel mode is Control shift b Extrude is Alt-E. Chamfer is Control shift c And this one's very good for corners because very rarely in architecture is there a true 90 degree angle. A lot of times what looks like a 90 degree angle will still have even a slight chamfer to it. Um, grow selection is control page up, shrink selection is control page down. Quick slice is control shift Q and cut is alt C. Now, using these techniques, I'm going to go through and look at my reference and um, create all the buildings in my scene. It's going to be tedious, so I'm only going to turn the camera on in situations where I'm not using these very obvious techniques. So since you've last seen this scene, I've modeled all the terrain, all the buildings, and anything that I couldn't procedurally put down. I did this using my video reference, which I took when I went down to visit the stadium. The next step is going to be to texture. I'm not going to tell you how to use Photoshop. Um, if you'd like to learn it and you don't already know, I highly suggest Classroom in a Book by the Adobe Creative Team. I learned everything I knew from that and it served me very well through the years. I can give you a few tips though. CG textures. It's your godsend. I used to have this um, well, false idea that to be a good artist that you had to be able to do amazing work with no reference. And the further I get in my career, the more I realize that reference is mandatory and you should cheat whenever you can short of plagiarism because the end result is what matters visually. Um, when I say cheat, I mean if you're doing a Photoshop painting, uh, even concept art, or especially concept art, you don't have time to paint in those really fine details. So just go online and get pictures of various objects that you're painting and then incorporate them in digitally and use them as layer masks to achieve um, detailing that you normally would have to spend days painting. It's a really f easy way to do this and I think that that concept should always be applied to textures. I'm going to go through and texture my scene and I'll see you when I'm done. A good knowledge of unwrapping UVW maps is essential for any good modeler. I'm applying this light wood texture to this outer fence. I like having planked textures because it allows me to access different areas of the map and it stops it from um, looking repeating, which is very important when you're working on large surfaces. 
I'm going to go ahead and add an unwrap UVW to my stack modifier and just select one post. I'm going to deselect ignore back facing, otherwise these back faces that the camera is not facing will not be selected. Now I'm going to go in and edit and I'm going to select ignore back facing and just get these front guys. I'm going to get a planer and align to view. Now we've got these three that are separated. You can unselect them and grab the next guys. Planer, align to view. There's other ways to go about this, box modeling and everything, but one thing when you're working with unwrapping UVWs is you want to make sure that everything is laid out correctly. If it's not working and you start getting overlapping UVWs, then you're going to um, start running into problems when you apply normal maps. It's incredibly essential, especially if you're going into high modeling um, using ZBrush or Mudbox. I always prefer to just take a little bit of extra time and make sure that my stuff is done right. Um, a really good way to think about unwrapping UVW maps is in relation to sewing. A jacket is exists in 3D space, but if you're going to um, make it, then you have to take individual patterns which are f just flat objects, and then you sew them together at the edges. These things that we're making in the UVW editor are the patterns, and um, each face corresponds with the texture that we've got lying under it. So, in essence, you each face, whatever this UVW is picking up, is going to be shown right here. And you're creating the illusion of a 3D object by moving these pattern pieces around. And in 3D space, you are then sewing them together. Um, speaking of sewing them together, once you've got your pieces all laid out, you can then go in and start ma manipulating it just as you would in 3D space. With target weld, weld, um, break will take these two vertices that are already welded together and separate them. And just start moving these together. There are a few tips and tricks to help make things easier. If you select all this and you don't want to deal with the polygons that are still in the scene but you're not um, currently manipulating, just go into display and filter selected faces. And now all you've got to worry about is this guy. If you want to rotate something by 90 degrees or a specific angle, you can hold down control and it'll snap to 5 degree increments. Um, you've got your standard manipulators up here, but this guy both affects move, um, scale, and rotate, just like the Maya manipulator does. Um, another thing is if you want multiple vertices to be on the same vertical axis, you can just manually type them in. So if I need these aligned, then just type in 1 in the V map, and um, if you want them aligned in this axis, you can type it in in this way. In case you don't know, I'm sure you do, right click on this and it'll naturally zero all your fact all your um your numbers on anything in Max. If you ever want to figure out which face is connected um to which other UV map, just select it and its brother will show up in blue. At this point in the process, it's really just a matter of moving your UVWs around until you really get the proper setting on the map. As you can see, moving the UVWs will dynamically update in the scene so you can see what you're doing. It's a really easy way to manipulate your textures and it's really just like grabbing the texture and moving it over except in reverse. You're taking the polygons and moving them so they match. Um, that's your basics on UVW and you can take those concepts and apply it to almost everything, which I'm going to do for the rest of the scene.